Okay, welcome back. It's Full Live Athlete Pastor Channel. This is Justin speaking, and it is the day 27 of the Online Bible Reading Club. Now, we're going to be in Exodus 16 through 18 today, and we're going to be in Matthew 18, 1 through 20. I'll remind you, this is the very Word of God. It's where you meet God. It's where you learn and get to know Him. And It's like no other book out there. Keep reading. Keep struggling through it. Keep spending the daily time doing it because it is it will the journey is worth it i guarantee you it uh, now we're going to see particularly how god reveals who he is in these verses if you look at 16 you'll see that bread is going to come down from heaven uh, that that uh, the people are going to be hungry they're going to need bread to eat and they're going to need meat and so god's going to provide quail in the evenings and bread after the dew in the morning and i that's, that's a great picture of how you need to know and I need to know that God is going to care for his people. He will not abandon them. He will give them everything they need. And, and, even, and, and he's got a, a plan and a, and, a, and a direction for you, an ethic for you. And this ethic is to represent who he is in the world. This is, again, we keep talking about this. God dwells with his people. They're going to be a holy people relating to a holy God and a holy place so that the world and the devil might see and be triumphed over. And God got me, might, might be glorified, that his name might be blessed. This is the point. So, so why do you have all these commands in the Bible and laws? Well, they're to make God known. Now, we are made in the image of God, so we're his image bearers, and we're to bear that image out. We're to reflect his light to all the world. Well, one day, one way we do that is by keeping his commandments, and his commandments include the Sabbath. And you see in, in Exodus 16 that this is a big deal. It's treated in a very big way. They, they've made provisions here. God's going to give them double on, on Friday so that on sa Saturday, the Sabbath, they're going to have more than enough to be provided for, and he's going to miraculously make it to be preserved. Miraculous preservation for this food. It's not going to spoil. There's not going to be worms eating up the meat. They're going to have enough to go for that extra 24 hours and be provided for until the next first day of the week. Now, isn't that amazing? I mean, like you see that that God's going to provide water out of a rock here in the next one. He's going to provide bread from heaven and meat, and he's going to prevent, providentially make it to where they're going to be safe. So this Sabbath day is a big deal. You might think, well, I might just think about this. If I give up one day a week to not work, well, other people might get ahead of me. And, and no, actually no. Um, if you work according to God's design, he always, always go his way and he will provide. Go his way because there's actually benefit in keeping his designs. And I know it sometimes might seem counterintuitive, but, but if you keep God's design, his rule, then you will be blessed. For instance, work six days. Work hard six days. Devote yourself entirely to your calling for the six days, and you will be blessed. And then take that one day and give, make it a holy rest to God. Rest from your worldly employments and, and all that you engage in throughout those other six days. Make that seventh day holy. Now, the converse is also true. Yeah, is you shouldn't expect to, have, to be functioning optimally if you, if you always are at rest. If you are always lazy or idle. Uh, you're not going to do well. Uh, you're you're going to break down, actually. You're made to work and labor uh, according to God's design. So so you work. We're made to work. We, we tend to actually identify ourselves with our, our callings and our jobs, right? We become overly identified with that and workaholics. Or if we're too interested in leisure and too identified with pleasure, then we actually become dysfunctional in that regard, too. So does that make sense? you got to take about, think about... Uh, work and rest according to God's design. We're made to rest. We're not made to work all the time. We have to rest. We have to sleep. We have to take that seventh day. Uh, but if we are always lazy and not giving the full effort and work, either either way, vice versa, we're going to encounter a lot of trouble, uh, ultimately long term. So work according to God's design. Now when you get 17, you've got water coming out of the rock. God's providing. God will provide. Go according to design. He will provide. He, he leads us in these positions in life to where we're going to to have to depend upon him and he will make his glory known. Now, and one way you see that is, is that he's going to become our banner, our signpost, our rallying point. And that story is illustrated in, in verse 8 through 16 of chapter 17 of Exodus, where they've got the Amalekites who just attack them. Well, okay, we've got a war started now, and so they've got a fight. So Joshua, uh, Moses' uh, number two guy, 
he, he leads the people out into battle and they start to win because Moses is holding up his arms and, 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 and his, his staff and he's saying, uh, go get them. And then well, he's an old guy, though. He gets tired, so his arms start to droop. He droops. Well, what happens is Aaron and her come up and prop up his arms again. And you know what happens? They win. It's a clear illustration point of how the, the banner, the, the rallying point, the signpost that they all look to is so important. And when Moses' arms are up in God's providence, they start to win again. And you know, ultimately, they call, it said, and they, they set up a memorial there, an altar to God, and say, uh, name this place, the Lord is my banner. And the Lord is our banner. We, we, don't, we don't look to where they won the battle against the Amalekites. Where do we look to? What hill do we look to? What hilltop? We look to the cross. We lift high the cross. This is our banner point. This is our signpost to say that God provides and fights for his people. You, can better, you better believe that God will crush underfoot the enemy, Satan, in the end because he did it at the cross. He's going to continue to do it. And we don't see it now, but we will see it. We live by faith. Now, think about the next chapter, 18. So you got a, re a reunion between Moses and his father-in-law. Jethro comes, and they talk, and he wants to hear the story about the Exodus and, and, and triumphing over Pharaoh, and they tell it. And they bless the name of the Lord. They worship him. They, they, they have a burnt offering there and a sacrifice to God. And it, and it says, uh, so that you may know, I know now that the Lord, Yahweh, is greater than all the gods. Isn't this amazing? God, God triumphs over Pharaoh so that worship can happen. Worship is the purpose of life. We're to glorify God and enjoy Him forever. Well, why is that so important? Well, we're going we're gonna to fight through all these, all these things that God gives us in life that, that are going to cause us to be terrified sometimes. Like think about Moses. He had just in chapter 17 uh, seen the people ready to stone him, and he had to call out to God, and God provided and you see here that Jethro looks at Moses and says, hey, you can't bear this burden alone. You have to provide uh, the people with help here, but you can't do it alone. So you need to put point elders filled with the Spirit to help you and to share the burden. And that's what he does because he cares about his people. He wants them to be worshipers. He wants them to know the will of God. He wants them to be holy in his people. And, and he, that's why he gives his leaders. Isn't that amazing? God cares about every single person that is a part of his people. As you flip the page over to the New Testament, look at Matthew 18, 1 through 20. That is a huge theme in Jesus' words. The disciples all want to know who is the greatest. And, and he says, look, unless you like, become like a child, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. That's what it says in verse 3. And so take the lowly position like the child. Be dependent upon God and he will take care of you. He will care for you. He will provide for you. Let's talk about how we relate to those in the family of God. Never, ever be a cause for temptation, a cause for stumbling, it says there. Uh, if you're a cause for stumbling, it would be better if you had a large millstone hung around your neck and that you're drowned in the, in the sea than to do so. It's better to have to be maimed and, 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 and to enter into, the, into life than to, than to have two eyes and be thrown in the fire of hell, Jesus says in verse of 9 of this chapter. Think about that. He cares so much about the little people in his people. There's no little people. He wants you to take care of them. You think of these stones, these millstones for grinding wheat. Some of them were so large that they had to be pulled by a donkey's cart. You know, so think about that. It says, if you cause these, these little ones to stumble and be tempted, it would be better for you to be thrown in the ocean and die or cursed. Now, I stay up late at night. I um, am... am burdened by this one reality that as a minister of the gospel, uh, I am tasked with not misleading people, not tempting them to, to turn away from God. I do everything I can, and I want us to be faithful to my ordination vows that I've made to God to lead the people of our flock. And, and I uh, see that as a direct application of God's love for every single one of his people. It says there uh, in this beautiful image of a story he tells to illustrate this, which is the parable of the wandering sheep or the lost sheep. Uh, he says he leaves the 90, the shepherd here leaves the 99 and goes after the lost one to reclaim him. And he rejoices over that lost one. And that's how we, we deal with sin in the church. We deal with the, with the, with the lost ones by calling them back to the Lord 
uh, and God rejoices over that. That's what he takes pleasure in. He's happier about that sheep. All right, think about that, guys. God bless you. Uh, if you're watching the very end here, we had a lot to cover today. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. Hit the like button, subscribe, share, and then just enjoy uh, reading the Word of God together and getting to know Him. He is your banner. He is your signpost. He has set you free, and you can trust Him. He's the Good Shepherd. Think of these heartwarming images we've seen about who our God is. He's a God who makes Himself known. He's a God who dwells with His people. And he dwells with you and me, though we're sinners. He see triumph over our sin and the enemy at the cross. Okay, God bless you. We'll see you on day 28. Peace.